And he's just like that. He's just like that. He does that when you least expect it. But it's awfully good to see you this morning. And we seem like we're so distant. I might have to move down there. I don't like being distant. I like being right up on uh, We have our graduates ceremony today. So this is going to be a, a good day. But it's going to be a little long. We got bake sale today. Uh, I still got my recipe in my pocket. In fact, what I was going to bake is still in my pocket. <laughs> I hope it don't stick to my pants. <laughs> and uh, this is just going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day, not because, not because of those activities. It's going to be a good day because the Lord is going to be involved in our activities. Uh, and I, that's what I'm looking forward to. As has been stated earlier, Brother uh, Peterson is out of town today, and uh, I'm going to stand in his stead uh, uh, preaching. Uh, and I still, I still enjoy preaching. In fact, I I enjoy uh, just spending time. Not so much preaching, Brother Campbell, but I just enjoy spending time with God. In his word. Now I'm going to show you something this morning. You excited? Come on now. This is this is not a funeral service yet. Uh, let's let me get you to get your Bible or your device, and I want to read to you where I'm going to come from. Try to expedite through this. I don't know that we will. But in Galatians chapter 2, how many times have you read this? How many times have you heard somebody read this? How many times have you heard this taught? And how many times have you heard it preached? But, but Paul, and I'm going to come back. I'm just going to highlight what Elder Denson, and I want to thank Elder Denson. Man, you pray from the heart. You, you make folk tremble. You... You get folk uh, excited, emotional, tears start to flow in. Uh, uh, I, that's a great job. That's an honor. Thank you so much for that. And then we want to thank Simeon for his uh, beautiful way that he led us. Uh, we appreciate it so much. Paul, so something had happened. You, you ever thought about that when you read this? What's, what, why, why in the world? Would, Paul says, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Now let, let, let's do that again, okay? Because there, there's something I'm going to set up here and do my best to try to get to. Paul says, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Now, if you got your own Bible, highlight the phrase, I'm crucified with Christ. He said, but nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's another phrase. Those phraseologies are phrases you should highlight. He said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Isn't that beautiful? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I'm going to try my best. and You just fasten your seatbelt. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you excited. I'm not me. I'm gonna let the word excite you. If you can't get excited by the word, you can't be excited. I know some folks like this philosophical gospel. But uh, if you're keeping score, let's talk about the paradox of a Christian life. Because in that text that I just read to you from Galatians, 
There are four paradoxes in the text that helps us to understand that living a Christian life means a lot of sacrifice. Jesus says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the latter part of that, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so the question should be, if Christians have obeyed the gospel, if we have been baptized in the blood of Jesus and we've come forward, why aren't we living the abundant life? And I contend based on Paul's text, just on the one verse, not all three of those, but on the one verse, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Every one of us ought to be able to make that statement that I'm crucified with Christ. But there's a paradox. And the paradox is, if we make the statement that we're crucified with Christ, that means that there ought to be a perpetuation of death. Not, not physical death, but there ought to be a perpetuation of getting self out of the way, death to self. Now, the word paradox, and I think all of us in here, and I'm not an English teacher, and I'm not trying to teach you English. Uh, 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 paradox is you, uh, usually a paradox is usually a counter, uh, it, it's a controversial statement. It, it's 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 common. It's it's not common to belief. In other words, it's a statement that seems contradictory and unbelievable. It's absurd. But you know what? It can also be true. But it's based on fact. Now watch Paul. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Was Paul physically crucified? Are we physically crucified? No, but when we are baptized for the remission of sin in the blood of Christ, we are crucified. That's why Jesus could make the statement in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. He said, let a man deny who? And let him pick up his cross. I'm going to give you four of these paradoxes and quickly, and I may not get to them all today, so if we don't, next time I preach, I'll get them. But one is that we got to learn to be dead. We're, it's a perpetual death or a, a life. The other one is identification. We don't know who we are. Paul said, I'm crucified. He said, but I'm not living. He says, Christ living it. So that's a paradox. When you say, you're not living, but Christ. Is. So half the time, we don't know who we are. I'll be there in a minute. I'm going to develop that thought. And the other one is, we don't know where we are. Paul said, the life I now live, I live in the flesh, but I live it by the faith. I, I, he, we don't know where we are. The reason that folk behave the way they behave, because they don't know where they are. And then last but not least, last but not least, there's a paradox between disposition uh, or distribution of life. It's a paradox. Watch what Paul said. He said he loved me and gave himself for me. He said, so I don't frustrate. I don't. I don't frustrate the law. He said, I dared to it. So I don't frustrate. The most difficult thing for us to do, and it hasn't started today or didn't start this year, didn't start with the pandemic, is try to get out of ourselves from Jesus Christ. That's the biggest challenge. Amen. 
So let's go now. Let's, let's get started. We okay? I, I was going to sing, but uh, Simeon done a great job. Let's, let, let's go back to Galatians chapter 2. Try to fill this in. Get some scriptural text here so that you'll have something to stand on. You may not shout, but you'll have something to stand on. In, in Galatians chapter 2, and the Bible says in verse number 17, uh, in verse number 17, Paul said, But if we seek, uh, but if while we seek to just be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? He said, God forbid. He said, God forbid. Then Paul said, for I build, if I build again the things which I destroy, there is a paradox, if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself. The Lord makes me, society makes me, my wife makes me, my friends, leadership. No, Paul said, I make myself. I make me a what? I, I make me that. Boy, when I saw him, so he sure frustrates me. He, he almost caused me to sin every time. No, 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 no. You make yourself. If she hadn't have said that, I would have still been living. No, 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 no. She can say what she wants. You make yourself. My children drive me crazy. No, they don't drive you crazy. You make yourself. I could say, well, I'm, I'm, he frustrates me. No, it's me. It has nothing to do with you. It has something to do with me. He, Paul said, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Camel, you cannot affect. You can't affect it on the inside. You can't affect it on the outside unless I let you. You remember the Trojan War? Remember them soldiers wanting to get it through that wall? They couldn't get through. They had a big wall up. They concocted an idea to get in. Thorn. They built a big old horse. They put their men inside. The men who were inside of the camp safe. You know what killed them? Curiosity. What kills us? Curiosity. Paul said, I make myself. And normally it's curiosity. You've been driving down the expressway, going south, and traffic is stopped north, and you become a part of the problem going south because you got to, you're curious. Wonder if they're black or white. Male or female. Curiosity. So Paul said, I make myself a transgressor. And because of that, that's where all the other problems come through, is that I make myself. Now let's get back to that. Paul, Paul had just told the Corinthians concerning the sea. He had just taught them concerning the sins of Peter. And Peter's sins grew out of a desire to satisfy the law of Moses over the law of Christ. Amen. And thus Peter was a hypocrite. Even in the Bible. Even in the Bible. And so if there were some in Paul's day, there's some today. And the reason that made him a hypocrite was because he was trying to be everything to everybody. He was trying to be two things at once. And they, and they could not go back to the old law because they were living in Christ. But Peter, Peter never denied that. Death to the law is life under God. How, how is this possible? And so there was a paradox. Let's go back. The first one is the paradox of perpetual, dead or alive. 
In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Here's a challenge. Paul says, if then ye be risen with Christ. You there? He says, if then ye be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Easily said, tough to do. Amen. He said, but don't set them on these things there. He said, the reason for that, the reason that Paul writes it, he said, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ. Why are you getting all so... Uh, 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 emotionally involved with what's on earth. Remember, he, remember, he said I already. He said I am crucified with Christ. He said you are, you're dead. Now, granted, God knows we need vehicle to get to and for work. We need to earn money, Amen. But we don't need to risk our Christianity to do these things. We don't need to rest it. He said, set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. He said, for you are dead, your life is hid in Christ. And when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him. Mortify your members. You still there? Yeah. Upon the earth. Fornication. Uncleanness. You know what it? affections, evil conceptions, and uh, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God coming on the children of disobedience. The paradox. He said that which also walked sometime when you lived in them. He said, but you're different now. Or you say you're crucified with Christ. He said, but now you also put off all these. Anger. Isn't that a challenge? I know there's some of us who never get angry. Don't raise your hand. We don't want to know who you are. We just want to know those who do. Wrath. Malice. Because this thing still exists in the church. Blaspheming. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Still. And here, here's a big one. I've been crucified with Christ. But he said, lie not one to another. He said, seeing that you put, and the reason, he said, seeing you put off the old man with these deeds, and you have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created them. That's the paradox. We, we died, we've been crucified with Christ, but we haven't let the old man go. Old man's still hanging around. And we can push him down for a couple of hours on Sunday morning in Sunday worship service, but don't catch me sad. We can push him down, but don't step on my feelings on Monday or Tuesday because the old man is coming back. And it's tough to resist. It's tough to resist. First of all, because all of us want to have the last word. I'm going to get the last word. You heard the one about the guys whose wife told him she wanted a pair of scissors. She aggravated him from sun up to sun down. Every time he'd go out to go get scissors, and every time he'd come back, she'd ask him, you get the scissors? He keeps saying, no, I ain't got them. Don't ask me about them scissors. You know how we are. Don't ask me about them scissors no more. He threatened. If you do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smack you. He came home tired, exhausted. She asked, you get the scissors? I told you not. He grabbed and choked her. She couldn't even speak. He, he had a headlock on her. He said, now don't say that no more. She looked at him and done. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have the last word. We gotta have the last word. But... Paul is letting us know that we, we, we're different. Now, and one, now, 
Here, here's, another, here's another one of those paradoxes. Do we know who we are? Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. We got an identity problem. Amen. And an identity problem is that, that, that the Lord, are we choosing the Lord? Have we denied him? Jesus said, if any man come after me, you have to deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Cross bearing is tough, isn't it? He said, and follow me. He said, for whoever, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? There has to be a difference. And the reason that there is not so many struggles is we don't know who we are. We, we, we have forgotten. I remember when I was growing up, well, we, were, we were very, like probably most of us, but some of you probably weren't, we were a very poor family. There were, I had 11 siblings, sisters and brothers. Now, that was mom and daddy's business. But we were poor. And we struggled. But my daddy would always tell us, when you go off from this house, that you forget who you are. And even in Christ, we've been crucified with Christ, but we lose our identity. Don't let somebody approach me wrong. I'm going to lose my identity. And we just don't do it with fellow Christians. We do it with the employer. We do it on the job. We do it in the shopping center. But most of all, we do it with our family. We forget who we are. Brother Jesus, the Lord said, you are the head of the house. What a challenge. What a challenge. Sister went out and put all that money on that credit card, and you've been telling them not to do it. And then you, you forget all about God till you use the head to house. <laughs> or you've been struggling all day at work and, and been dragging to the guy. My wife sure fixed me a good meal. You get home, and there ain't even two cold hot dogs. <laughs> but the Lord said, You are the head. Of the house. You forget who you are. Because you look at them two hot dogs. And you don't bless this. Because <laughs> sis didn't bless you. We forget. Paul said, but, but we've been crucified. So what's the paradox? The paradox is that it's easy for us to say. We can't mimic it. We can't live it. Or we can. But we just got to get self out of the way. I ain't going to let them treat me like that. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to let them say that to me. And the biggest one is I like to hear this. Especially have a, have a business meeting, an elder meeting, or something. I, I'm not going to tolerate. Okay. Well, who are you? <laughs> the Lord tolerates us. I know in my closet, in my private time, I'm probably the worst thing out here. <laughs> because well, I got to stay on my knees. And so I don't have the, the right, I don't even have the ability to even make the statement that I'm not going to tolerate. I'm not going to tolerate him. When God is constantly tolerating me. And that's because we just forget who we are. I think about Jesus. I think about Jesus. 
when they took him in chains, led him off to Calvary, through that, that kangaroo court, when they spat in his face, when they humiliated him, when they mocked him. We couldn't have went through that. We couldn't have went through that. But Jesus didn't forget who he was. He done what any of us would do. And when, when pressure got great, Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But you know how he finished it? Not my will, but your will. In other words, I want this, but if you don't want it, we forget. And the paradox is, it makes it tough for us to live for the Lord versus the paradox. Every time our lives, we should be living the best of our lives. Amen. Satan gets the best of us. In fact, he puts sin where we can, where it will challenge our thoughts. And what's perplexed about it, what is so perplexing about it is that many of us, he doesn't try to hide it. He puts it right where we can see it. We're just too weak to resist. But yet, I've been crucified with Christ. Amen, lights. The fact is that we can do much better with these challenges. And it's much easier for us to live for Christ. Paul says, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul said, I want to know. Paul, I thought you did know him. Paul said, but I want to know him. And you know what Paul wanted to know? Paul said, I want to understand the victory of his resurrection. I want to understand the fellowship of the power of God. I want to understand that so that I can say with confidence that I'm crucified with Christ. Paul said, but, but that, I need to know him. Paul is just basically said, I'm okay on, I'm okay in service. I'm okay when it comes to talking about baptism. I'm okay when it comes about talking about the church. But these other things just seem to trip me up. Sister Joan close your ears a minute. This don't have nothing to do. Any of you brothers been watching the playoffs? You've been watching Phoenix and the Clippers. You know, Phoenix is my team. <laughs> but that little guy that's been checking my Kentucky guy. Ronnie, I know who you know I'm talking about. That Beverly guy. Oh, I'd like to knock him out. He's so <laughs> in the aggravate. He chases it around. He does stuff. I get mad at the TV. I holler, he don't know that I'm hollering. Sit down, man. Leave Booker alone. You done broke his nose. Two games in, the first game, he broke his nose in three places. So when he was out there last night doing all this stuff, he had done that. <laughs> to the t he don't know I did it. I say that that's the way Satan is. He just say, Constant, perpetual pestering. He he knows when he's got the ups on me. And you know what? It's like two men wrestling. Me and my brother used to wrestle, and uh, I would get on him and get him around the neck, and I said, "I'm not gonna let you up till you say you give." That's what Satan did. He got me by the neck, brother Cam. And when he gets me down. He's not going to let me up until I say, I give. And that's why 
We have to go back and rehearse in our minds and our hearts. We have to be, be willing to take the scripture and make it applicable and apply it so that we can be crucified with Christ. That's just not words to miss. If you say you are crucified with Christ, look what that takes on. Look at the power that that undertakes. Look at the challenge. It's real. It's a real challenge, not just on Sunday, but it, it's a lifetime challenge. And I want to say, even though if we lived a hundred years, Satan is not going to leave us alone. Sin is not going to leave us alone. It's going to get greater. The challenge has become greater. Some folks say, well, you ought to be better off the older you get, you don't have no challenge. Yeah, you do. You might not have the ability to fulfill them, but you think about them. <laughs> you think about it. I'm simply saying that if we can withstand and understand what paradox, and that this, this is just my idea here, looking at what Paul is saying. But there are other texts that are abso absolutely the same, that make the same application, that it's tough. And then the paradox that we're in two places. That's easy. We're in the physical, and we're in the spiritual. And Paul even writes that this is flesh versus spirit. How long did Paul say that battle was going to last? A lifetime. A lifetime. You can fight today, but if you're not careful, if you don't try to hold the physical at bay and increase the spiritual, the physical will overtake both. It's a constant battle. But Camel, I have to be honest with you, some days I win, some days I lose. And the days I lose, I don't need anybody coming up and say, ah, hi, the devil got you today, you lost. You know what? My conscience tells me. I lost today. Lord, I need a little bit more strength. I need a little bit more of the Spirit, because that's the Holy Spirit is, that is there to help us. He's our helper. When you go back and read that text, I think you mentioned that text in Romans when it talks about the Spirit, it makes intercessions for us. He does all the time. But our, but, but our own will overrules those. When he's making the intercession, you, yeah. You know, there's some things you know you are not eating. but your, your own willpower. When I go in public, I should be buying bottles of water. I should be drinking water. But the other side, little old Welch's guy jump up, get some angry boots. <laughs> I have to brush him up, man, I don't need no grape. I know you're going to be thirsty. Aren't you working in the yard today? Get some of that grape juice. So rather than get 24 bottles of water, I get one bottle of water and two cartons of grape juice. <laughs> but I'm not the only one. Those challenges confront us every day. Not, maybe not that simple, but they do. And that's what Paul is talking about. That's the paradox of life. I know that drinking grape juice. The doctors told me. I don't need him to tell me. He's not wearing my pants. I know I can't get them on. It ain't from drinking water. <laughs> my wife, you don't need that grape juice. I knew that. But yet I read. So I said, well, I'm going to drink one bottle of water and two cartons of grape juice. I'll be all right. You know that ain't going to work. 
We forget where we are located. What's our place? I'm in Christ. And I want you to know this, church. Just because we have made the confession that we are in Christ, challenges don't leave. They get greater. And some folks think they can remedy it. Oh, I'm getting challenged. I'm going to run to the preacher. No, the preacher got challenges too. Took me 40 years of preaching to realize I got challenges. So when you come with your, look, the, come fanning and stuff and walking in the office and blowing. I'm saying, what's wrong? I got stuff going on. Me too. <laughs> Shut the door on your way out. Where we need to go is to the Lord. We need to take our burdens to the Lord. It's all right to talk to somebody, but they can't fix it. Only Jesus. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with him. I may have my struggles, but I'm crucified with him. I'm going to stay with him. And then we have to learn to fight the good fight of faith. First Corinthians, First Corinthians five seventeen, where's the second book? Okay. Second, isn't it? He says, "For we walk by faith and not by sight." God gives us a pattern, gives us a way, and we have to fight the good fight to get there. And then, last but not least. I love this passage. I usually quote this at the end of my preaching. And then I went back and scared it. It's powerful for this lesson today. In Romans chapter 6, the Bible says, Paul writing says, What shall we say then? He said, Shall we, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What did Paul say? Well, I guess so. You're in the world. You might as well follow. No, he said, he said, God forbid. Paul said, how can we? Well, how can we live any longer therein? He says, know ye not as so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ. We were baptized where? Into his death into his death. And it doesn't stop there. He says, therefore, we are buried with him. And like as Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father. Read that, man, because I don't want to quote it. He said, Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father. What happened? No, he didn't. He said, we are too. He, he said, he said, we are too. You sure that's in there? Thornton, is that what your Bible says? Oh, no. He said, Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father. He said, but you were too. You were too. You were too. I was too. Look at the challenge there. So you can't, you know, we don't have enough excuses to feel. Well, I'm, I'm all out here by myself. The Lord left. No, he didn't. Me and my, I can't get along with my husband. We fight all the time because the Lord left. No, he didn't. Them, them, them brothers don't treat. No, 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 no. It's not their fault. It's your fault. He said, Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we. Even so we. That's why I said, how come we're not living an abundant life? We got all the equipment. We got the resources. We got everything it takes to live it. Why aren't we there? And he said we are to do Walk well. Now I want to tell you this. You already know. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. He said we are to walk in the newness of life. You know what that means? Challenges are going to be real. 
just because you're in the church, challenges are going to be real. People still going to lie on you. They still going to talk about you. Let me tell you something there. They'll steal your car like they will anybody else. They'll break in your home like anybody else. Your job, your boss will come and snap at you. You can't, he come and snap at you. I'm leaving. You ain't going to talk to me that way. I bet you don't say that to him, do you? He can talk any way he won't. You're going to tell, you, you tell your co-worker, he ain't going to do it no more. And then next day he do it again. That's the last time he's going to do that to me. Well, well, I thought he wasn't going to do it no more. But with us, we got different restrictions. I won't be caught dead letting Campbell talk to me like that. <laughs> We're in a new life. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ living in me. And the life I live now is because he loved me and gave himself for me. Church, I couldn't plan this idea of salvation. It wasn't my idea. It was the Lord. Jesus loved us. God the Father loved us that he sent his only begotten son to this earth to die a vicarious death so people like us could be saved. Yes, sir. Now I want to tell you something. He doesn't wait till we get perfect to save us. Many of us have many flaws. And even after we come out of the water, we still have flaws. And if we don't work on those flaws and those shortcomings, they don't improve on their own. They get worse. We learn to cover them better. If I'm a liar and I don't, I don't work on lying when I come out of that water, I just learn to cover it better. Thornton don't know when I'm lying now. He used to look at my eyes. I got my eyes shut when I lied to him now. If you don't work on them, they get worse. Still. Now, uh, why I say that? Lord, Holy Spirit pushed me into that. Because Christians don't steal. We go punch on the time clock and then go sit down and communicate. And this will start at 8. But we look at Who is looked at? It's 8 30. I better start to work. Well, you've been there 30 minutes. What you been doing? What you been doing? Oh, they don't miss that. Sister so and so lost her job because you were still in 30 minutes every day. Or ink pens. You know, we, we did them ink pen thing. Guy come up to you and say, I, you got a pen, you borrow his pen, and you're hoping he turns his back. You keep it. Don't, don't ever call him back. Hey, man, you, you left the pen. You just add that to your repertoire. <laughs> I got five or six of them. And you brag about it. You know what? I got five or six pens today like that. You stole them. I ain't steal them. Oh, we're good. Best, best run is going to the gas station. I like that one. Going to the gas station. <coughs> and somebody go in the store and pay for five dollars worth of gas. You pull up at the pump on the other side and you pumping. Oh, I I thought this was I didn't know this was like this. <laughs> Jesus died so we could have a better life. God sent his son. Son gave his life. To establish a system of salvation. And our responsibility, many of us in here have been done, engaged in this, is hear God's word, believe it, repent of us, and confess Jesus, and be willing to be buried with him in the watery grave of baptism. Some folks want to be Christians, but they haven't obeyed God. You know, there's a lot of folks. Campbell, I want to be a, I want to have a doctor's degree in psychology. But I haven't been to school. And no matter how sincere I want it, I have to make the preparations to achieve it. Yes. 
the same with Christianity. You can think that God, and let me tell you something. Well, God knows my heart. I'm sure he does. He knows the heart of all of us in here. And I, I quoted earlier from Matthew 26. He knew Jesus. When Jesus was confronted with all of those things, Jesus just simply prayed like we always do. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. Jesus, he knew Jesus. Jesus is a part of the divinity, the, the trinity. But God's will must be done. And Jesus recognized that. If you want to be saved, you've got to hear God's word. Believe it. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus and be buried with him in baptism. Baptism is what puts you in Christ. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.10. Paul says, Therefore I do all things for the elect's sake, that they might obtain the salvation. Where's salvation? Which is in Christ. How, how, is that okay? Salvation is in Christ. You want to be saved, what's the very next question you should ask? How I get there? Right? And here's how you get there. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. He said, for we all the children of God by faith. Many of you have been baptized into Christ. I put him on. There is no salvation. There is no faith outside of Christ. All faith and all salvation is in Christ. Not because coffee's there, but because that's where God put it. And if God's got enough sense to develop that system, he's got enough sense to put the save where they need to be. He, he's got enough. When, he, when Jude was writing, when Jude said, it, it, was, it, was, it just was pressing my heart to write unto you about the common salvation. You know what commonality is? Common salvation? Common salvation is that everybody is saved is saved the same way. That nobody saved any different. Now I know people to tell you, I, I used to work with a guy, he was got drunk one night driving down the street, hit a bridge and bumped me. Oh man, the Lord spoke to me. No, he didn't. You were drunk. You, when you seen that bridge and bump, your conscience said, fool, you shouldn't have got drunk. You're gonna hit that thing. God don't wait till you why would he wait till you get ready to hit a bridge and bump when you drunk and tell you, straighten up, buddy. I don't act like that. And I say that facetiously because that's the way people think God acts. He saves us all the same way. Jude wrote about the common salvation. It's common because everybody does the same thing to be saved. He wouldn't save you one way and me another. He wouldn't be a just God to do that. He provided salvation. Coming up. And if you're here this morning, you know where you stand. Just be honest with yourself. You don't have to be honest with me. But I believe that if you're honest with yourself, search yourself. Search your own heart. Make your peace call and election. I want you to know that God loves you. And so do I. Why don't you come while together we stand and sing a song to you today? There's a fountain free and tears for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste. To the free, oh, tis the fount of love from the source above, and it bids us all free.